virtual reality is great, but we must not forget that we are only at the beginning of the attempts to immerse ourselves in a virtual world. It's true that the concept of VR is not something new, and there have been dreams about this technology since almost a century ago, but until recently there were no proper means to make this dream a reality. So what about now? Well, still in its infancy, in my opinion, the technology has finally reached a point from which we can at least see the direction toward the future most of us are excited about. The full dive technology, similar to the Nerve Gear from the anime Sword Art Online, will not remain fictional for long. Now that I have your attention, let's talk about the reason I believe we are right now at what I would like to call the true starting line of absolute VR immersion. For most of the time since the birth of this concept, VR was either a dream of futuristic technology or a very expensive device targeted toward big companies or the military. Around 2012, VR headsets for consumers start emerging thanks to the genius of a guy named Palmer Lucky, but even then, because of the limitation of the hardware and software possible at the time, the number of VR enthusiasts, while growing, was not big enough to make significant waves. Fast forwarding to 2020 when the Quest 2 was launched, we see what can happen when a big company like Meta is crazy enough to sell standalone VR headset at a loss in a period when most people are locked inside their homes. This was the device that introduced most of the VR enthusiasts of today to this wonderful technology and at the same time a turning point for the entire VR industry. To prove this statement, you can look at almost any VR hardware survey. The Quest 2 holds the first place by a large margin compared with any other VR headset. Now, a couple of years later, more headsets have appeared, but the most important part is that the VR user base is significant enough for big companies and developers to consider giving the consumer VR market a try. We are only in the first part of 2024 but already have seen Apple entering the VR slash MR space with the Apple Vision Pro and heard news about other big companies like Google, LG and many more planning to enter the VR world in the future. Suddenly, this become a race between the biggest companies in the world to see which will be the first to deliver a headset good enough to attract the rest of the general population. With this kind of competition, the speed at which the technology will advance will be exponentially faster and we as consumers will see more and better headsets coming in shorter intervals. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. The virtual reality experiences most of us dream about are not limited to only wearing a VR headset and a full body tracking suit. We desire to feel like we are actually in the game and live experiences we can't even imagine in the real world. I'm talking about fully diving into a virtual world, similar to the situation presented in the anime Sword Art Online. Until recently, this was just an unreachable sci-fi technology, but now some companies are working on devices that might open the door to this kind of reality in the future. Two different approaches are being tried to reach this kind of technological innovation, the non-invasive and invasive kind. An example of the non-invasive method is the Galia headset, a prototype made by the collaboration between OpenBCI and Vario. This headset has a lot of sensors like the EEG, which measures electrical brain activity, EMG, which measures the electrical impulse of muscle, EDA, which measures the sweat level of your skin, and PPG, which measures your heart rate. All of these sensors combined with the eye tracking of the headset are meant to work together and allow you to control a virtual world or character with almost no physical movement. There is a need for more work before this becomes a consumer viable product, but it offers a glimpse at the possibility of the future Nerve Gear-like headsets. A more promising method, in my opinion, is the invasive one which will involve an implantable brain-computer interface attached directly to your brain. This will allow for faster and more detailed transmission of signals between our brain and the device which will allow us to enter the virtual world. Right now, I know about two companies that acknowledge the possibility of using this kind of technology for gaming. The first is Neuralink, owned by Elon Musk. I think most of you know about this company already. 
At the moment, being in the initial stages of human trials, their device is targeted at disabled people trying to offer them an alternative way of interacting with the real world. But Musk himself admitted that his BCI will most likely change gaming in the future. Even the first human who received this implant is telling us how much fun he had playing Mario Kart only using his brain. The next disability Musk is trying to solve using Neuralink is to allow a blind person to somehow see the real world. If this proved to be a success, the possibility of seeing an entire virtual world without the need of a screen will be open for the future. The second company trying to use invasive BCI for gaming is Valve. Well, more precisely, Gabe Newell recently revealed to the world that he is the co-founder of Starfish, a neural interface company. Taking into account that he stated his belief in using this kind of technology for gaming in 2021, this announcement proves once again that he is trying to make this dream about the future a reality as soon as possible. We don't know much about this BCI company yet. On the official website, the project they have announced to be working on is a minimally invasive one-dimensional implant for neuromodulation and neural recording, as well as utilizing advanced transcranial magnetic stimulation, also known as TMC. For most of us, these are just a complicated line of words, but being supported by the owner of one of the biggest gaming platforms in the world makes me optimistic about the applicability of their future technology in enhancing gaming experiences. Despite me being optimistic, it will most likely take another decade or two before someone gets close to fully transporting our conscience into VR. But one more question still remains. Would you consider implanting a BCI in your head in order to experience fully diving into a virtual world? In my case, I will not even question selling my soul to the first company that managed to transport me into a world capable of simulating the feeling of using real magical abilities. I believe not all of you are as crazy as me. So let me know your answer down into the comments. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more VR content. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.